Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest, Karen Turk. Is a former Miss Florida iHeart Radio host, right wing activist, political commentator, and host on Behind the Headlines. She's a, I guess, mutual friend with Roger Stone. Cool connection there. And she has been looking into the issues of voter fraud and whether or not our election can be stolen. Obviously, we have plenty of fun stuff we could debate for an hour if we wanted to. But I do want to take advantage of this opportunity to pick your brain, Karen, and, and really look at, at what's going on with Corona and the upcoming election. So thank you for joining us. Is there anything else you want people to know uh, uh, about thank you? you. Yeah, I mean, just please subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, which is Behind the Headlines TV. I'm posting a lot of new content there. This is really the culmination of like everything I've wanted to do. You know, there's so much hype, so much clickbait news, so many things that you can't believe. They're just so unbelievable. And the truth behind the headlines is really what we need to expose. And all of us in America, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, you need to wake up and pay attention because there's a lot of bullshit happening right now. And I want to go behind the headlines and behind the bullshit. Now, Karen, starting with the big picture, because one of the things that, that you found that you wanted to highlight for people is that there have been 1,071 proven cases of voter fraud with 938 criminal convictions and backing up that number, 43 criminal penalties, 74 diversion programs, and the charges range from absentee mail and fraud to duplicate voting, to ineligible voting, to false registrations. This is something that's been a part of elections since we've had elections, right? Yeah, but it definitely has been. There's been a trend where if you look at it, it's a lot of these people that are closely connected. And I, I have to say, doing the research, a lot of them are connected to the Democratic Party. It's just a reality. It's just a fact in the cases that we looked at. And we pulled apart these cases. And the thing that was really infuriating to me is if you watch the mainstream media right now, you'll hear them say again and again, you know, the president's going to start this narrative about mail-in ballot fraud and there's no truth to it. Well, just in late July, there was these city council people in New York who were a, a part of a huge mail-in ballot scheme. I mean, this is not something that's not happening. So it's really infuriating that the mainstream media can come forward and lie like this to the American people. We had a situation on L.A. Skid wait, wait, wait. Row. Are, where you, are you trying to say the mainstream media lies? I'm all, shocked. All day, really? every day, all day, every day. And, you know, some of the cable news channels do, too. And there's some that I like more than others. But, you know, the mainstream media as a whole is controlled entirely by advertising and it's controlled by money and who's who's pulling the strings. And, you know, I've done an expose on George Soros before as well. And. You know, when you look at the people that are pulling the strings, it's big corporations and the billions of dollars that flow into these news outlets. And what they say, you really can't believe. You got to go behind the headlines. OK, so the next question I, I got to ask, I think, is about the significance of this. Right. Because a lot of the people who want to say voter fraud's no big deal will say, well, you know, if an individual votes here, you know, they vote without a driver's license. What's the big deal? That doesn't really change the outcome. But that's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about deliberate, politically organized efforts to swing critical districts to affect the outcome of elections, right? Correct. And you can look at the case in Philadelphia, which was also in July, and you had Michael Myers, who was um, convicted of stuffing the ballot box. And Dominic DeMauro, who was his partner in crime on this thing, basically stood in a voting booth, just voting again and again and again and again. So you're talking about one person that can make an impact on a large number of votes. So, you know, it doesn't take very much. And, you know, we just had a, a congressional primary down here in Florida, and I was looking at the numbers in the congressional primary because the candidate that I really wanted to win lost by a very small margin. The margin was only about 260 votes in this congressional district. Yep. So it doesn't yep. take a lot to sway an election or to defraud an election. So, you know, all of these mainstream media outlets and this hype that wants to come forward and say, this is no big deal. It's a very big deal. And when you're looking at the amount of people that will be voting in the upcoming presidential election, it's a really big problem. When you look at the fact that, you know, there have been illegal immigrants that have been registered to vote. And this is a fact. 
Um, you're talking about 572 of them in Illinois that were signed up because of a faulty signature pad at the driver's license office. That's 574 votes. That's a pretty big deal. Okay. And it, and it would seem that being the, the party out of power right now, the Democrats might be more inclined in, in uh, committing voter fraud in a specific way in order to turn the tables there. What makes you think that right now the Democrats are engaged in more voter fraud than Republicans? I think they've become the party of desperation. I think that you can look at a lot of things that have happened. I really do. I think since 2016, they have lost their plan. They've lost their platform. They've lost their agenda of how they're supposed to help the American people. And if you look at the DNC convention last night, it's all about this president. It's no longer about what we're bringing to the table. It's about Donald Trump. And there's a really big issue with that. I find it really disgusting because they're supposed to represent their constituents and they're not. They're so hell bent on undermining everything this president does that they've lost their focus. And the reason that I think that they're the ones that are gonna commit more voter fraud is clearly illustrated by that. But to even bring it up another notch, they were saying mail-in ballots work, mail-in ballots work, mail-in ballots work. And then all of a sudden last week, Nancy pops up conveniently and says, oh, well now the post office is corrupt because the president and the postmaster are, you know, they have a relationship. So now if anything goes wrong in our mail-in ballots, if anything goes wrong, it's going to be the president's fault. And isn't that ironic after they were pushing this agenda all along? Okay. So since, since you're looking at it, it, it voter fraud, are, are, are you looking at it just in terms of these specific criminal things? Or are you looking at the, the, the sort of more general problem of voter manipulation? I'm looking at both. I think the fraud illustrates the manipulation. So I think when you look at the fraud and you can actually give people tangible facts, which is what I tried to do on Behind the Headlines TV, I try to give people tangible facts because otherwise you just become a conspiracy theorist. And believe me, okay. I've been labeled that way before. Okay, so then everything that you said about the Democrats being true as the party of desperation and having become since 2016. And I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to challenge, actually, that there's a big part of your answer there that I, I wholeheartedly agree with, that I think Trump has done a truly brilliant job of, of, of promoting uh, mental health issues, and specifically Trump derangement syndrome. Yes, he has a way of getting under people's skin. Uh, but everything that you said about the Democratic Party becoming the party of desperation it, it, from 2016 till now, would you say then that that applies to the Republican Party prior to that because of the voter fraud in Florida and Ohio in 2000 and 2004, where you had Republican secretaries of state specifically suppressing voter opportunities by making voters wait in longer lines, having polling uh, just uh, places less available in areas where Democrats were voting in order to change the electoral outcome from the votes in Florida, as we saw with Roger Stones and, and the Brooks Brothers riot in Florida in 2000, but also in 2004 for Bush's reelection with the uh, really horrific widespread voter suppression by the Republican Secretary of State in Ohio. You bring up a really interesting point. I think historically we have had issues and we could go back and we could look at those. I'm focused on the present because I need to live in the here and now. I'm concerned about my children and the future of America. And I think this election in particular right now where we are as a country is really pivotal. And I don't think that there's a Democratic candidate, even if I was a Democrat, which I'm not, that I could really sit back and back because I really think the Democratic Party has gone so far to the left that they've lost all focus in representing the moderate Americans that they used to represent. I mean, the Democratic Party has changed a lot, even over the last 10 years. Obama being in office for eight years, that really set us back. And I was really optimistic when Obama was elected. I didn't vote for him, but I felt, you know what? Everybody did. Here he is. He's my president. And you want to know what? He can really make a difference to unify America. And that eight years down the toilet, that didn't happen. And now we're in a worse place with the racial divide, with a lot of the things that have gone on, these narratives that they push. And I don't even really believe there truly is a racial divide. I think it's a narrative that's pushed to further an agenda. And unfortunately, the 
left agenda, the democratic agenda has now become an agenda of socialism and communism. And it's it's one that most Americans can't stand behind. Wait, are you you're saying the Democrats are just now open about socialism? Ah, I think it's been uh, really I mean, I think it's getting worse. It's yeah, it's getting worse. Worse. But for everything you said there, it sounds like I mean, I'm sound I'm I'm really encouraged by your analysis because it sounds like you're gonna be supporting libertarian Joe Jorgensen in twenty twenty. Is that right? Are you on Team Freedom? I'm now? not, I'm not, I'm not. Although I respect your right to be on that team because you wanna know what? In America we have freedom and we can all make choices and we can vote for whatever candidate we feel is best. But I'm gonna stand behind our great president Donald Trump and call me a Trumpster, say I'm on the Trump train. I am because I think he's done a really good job. And I think if the Democrats didn't keep taking shots at him every chance they got, he'd be doing an even better job. Look at where the economy was before the COVID crisis and before they manufactured a political narrative out of that that has now taken us all into an economic downturn. Yeah, see, Karen, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I really have to disagree here. And I think your sort of dismissal of the significance of history condemns you to repeat it. Because if you don't remember how the Republican Party was just as unethical as the party of desperation, and you are falling for this, you know, blind color loyalty, you're going to miss the whole fact that we really have a one party system in America, where we have the Democratic wing of the American Socialist Party, and we have the Republican wing of the American Socialist Party. You think we have freedom, not with your president. Donald Trump doesn't respect my freedom to own a gun doesn't respect your freedom to own a bump stock, to, uh, to to not be subject like myself as a veteran to red flag laws that would be used to deny me those rights, doesn't believe in my freedom to have my own retirement program. He's gonna keep social security going, socialized defense, socialized public safety, socialized dispute resolution, socialized medicine as we already have in this country before Obamacare. I mean, why would you support red flavored socialism over blue flavored socialism when you could actually support freedom with a libertarian candidate? Because uh, I don't believe that it's the same thing. And I don't believe that, you know, what you're equating to. I mean, we do have socialistic principles in this country. That's that's the way that it is. And that's the foundation that we have at this point, And we have to work with what we have. But I, I wouldn't call that the founder. You're saying, are you saying America is founded on socialism? I, no, I'm saying we have some socialistic principles that are involved in our government and they, we can't get away from that as quickly as maybe you or I would like to. Look at Obamacare, look at medicine, look at Medicare. That's a socialistic principle. Okay. Medicare is, a, it is. I mean, it, it is what it is. And, and there are probably more things, there, there are probably more things that you and I agree on than we don't agree on. And if we could focus now as people in America on actually looking at the things that we agree on, I think we'd be better off. But I knew coming on this show that we probably wouldn't agree on anything because I know your stance on Donald Trump. And again, it's your right to do that. In a lot of ways, I'm a libertarian too. I actually support a lot of libertarian ideals when it comes to things that are socially conscious. I don't necessarily think government, I don't believe in big government. I don't necessarily think the government should have a hand in a lot of the social things that they do. However, I got to work within the two party system that we have a vote to Joe Jorgensen. Let's call it what it is. It's a vote for the Democratic Party. No, vote for Joe Jorgensen is a vote for Joe Jorgensen. And that kind of voter shame is why we're stuck with this system that we have today with the duopoly. Now, Karen, I got one last challenge on Trump and we'll get back sure. to the voter from my promise, because your, sure. your case is that he's not shrinking government fast enough. Is kind of a nice illusion, but it's not true. Government has continued to grow under Trump. How can you support a president who's growing government? I think we have a president that's grown our economy. Let's take COVID out of it. Let's look at everything up until March. Let's look at Even the facts that our economy has grown. I, and I think my the reason that I voted for him is the same reason. I'll, I'll fill you in on a little secret. I voted for Ross Perot. I voted for Ross Perot back in the day. And the reason that I voted for Ross Pro is the first time that I voted was because I believe in bringing somebody in who isn't a traditional politician. And I thought, okay, what better than an oil tycoon to revive our economy and to come in with some untraditional ideas? It wasn't I didn't love everything about him. But if we can fix our economy, guess what? As much as you might not like it, money empowers us to make good decisions for America. Money empowers us to have leverage when it comes to international relations. Money gives us power as far as our gross domestic product. Money's important. 
even if you don't like it, it's important and it's what drives us to be able to give back to our citizens. So I'm all for any president that can revitalize the economy first. And then the other things that I want, I believe will follow. All right, Karen. So looking ahead and, 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 you know, one of the things I want to say too, is just for this opportunity as, as much as we might disagree or have guests on the show that we would take opposite positions with, I think Karen and I both agree that more Americans should be part of this conversation. More people should be paying attention. The more people who are engaged, the better off we all are in answering these questions. And the big question that all of us who care looking forward to November are asking is, what the hell is going to happen? Are we going to have a regular election? Is Trump going to deny the results if he loses? Are the Democrats, gonna, well, we know the Democrats are going to freak out regardless. Uh, they're good at that. Uh, but uh, what, what, what do you actually think is going to happen? I, I think that Donald Trump's going to win by a landslide, and I don't think that there's going to be that much of an issue if you really want me to just take it exactly as I see it. Um, but if he doesn't win by a landslide, I do think that it will be done in part because of voter fraud and because they're going to try to manipulate this election. And I think that the mail-in ballots, I really believe that everybody should go out and vote in person. I do. Put your mask on. Do whatever you need to do to make you feel better about it. But let's do, I know, let's do what we know works. Let's show up at the polls. I, is Trump's your mind blown out? Was that like the mind blown? What, what, what was Trump, that? No, no, but Trump, Trump is, Trump is, Trump, it's Trump's state of emergency. Trump is wearing a mask now. Trump is the one who fell for all of this. Anyway, all right, so look, <laughs> looking ahead, <laughs> I, I, if, if that's your prediction, that Trump is going to win in a landslide, mm -hmm. I got to ask, how do you suggest he's going to turn it around? Because right now, the polls that I'm looking at that do seem credible, even the ones that include Jorgensen and Hawkins, uh, Biden's had something around 10 points. I, yeah, now, not, by the way, by the way, hold on. I'm not, I'm not saying that Trump can't do it. I'm not one of these Trump is an idiot guys. He's getting a little senile, but he's still pretty freaking clever. <laughs> uh, he could pull it out. I'm just asking you, how do you think he would pull it out? I think he's going to pull out because I think Americans are going to actually show up at the polls. And I really do believe that we are still the not so silent majority and that there are a lot of Trump supporters and Trump voters. A lot of people that saw what he did with the economy that feel that the COVID crisis in part has been manufactured to suit a Democratic narrative and that they will show up at the polls and they will vote for Donald Trump and he will be reelected. I think it's pretty simple. So you're saying that the, the, the polls today are just inaccurate to even current reality. Just like in 2016, the polls don't the polls don't reflect what's really happening. I wish we had better polls. I'm all for it. Maybe we should come up with a poll, Adam. Maybe we should become pollsters. Me and you. Let's do it. Uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's Karen. It's been a tempting project of mine for a long time to say, look, we could do a better, more honest job and get better data out there, and it would make it harder for vote fraud to be effective, right? Uh, but, you know, I, maybe, maybe you'd be more interested in this in an immediate project. Roger turned me down. But uh, given given your confidence in Trump, what do, you, what do you think of starting a super PAC with me called Citizens for an Intelligent President? And we just raised the money to have all of the candidates who are qualified by electoral votes. So Hawkins, Jorgensen, Trump and Biden to take a cognitive test live side by side. Ooh, that's really interesting. I'm gonna have to ponder that. I, I might, I might, I might be with you on this. I like the idea because I think that I think our president's completely cognitive. So I don't think I don't have any any doubt that he would do well on that. Well, it's only because you haven't seen him debate Joe Jorgensen yet. But that's that's all we'll go into that on for now, Karen. Actually, I really do look forward to hearing from you off offline here. You got my Thank number. You. I hope to hear from you later today. Uh, Definitely. I'll give you the last word here. What, what else do you think people should know about voter fraud, the 2020 election, and how to connect with you? Uh, open up your eyes. Watch Behind the Headlines TV on YouTube. Pay attention because not everything you're being fed is real. And if you want to know what's really happening, you got to delve pretty deep and you got to go behind the headlines. So I hope everybody will catch my episodes and just stay informed and pay attention to what's happening. There's a reason they don't want to show you up. at the, uh, They don't want you to show up at the polls. And the reason isn't COVID. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Karen. Thank you so much, Adam. Have a great day.